Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to build robots. Hell yeah! Legend of Mana isn't just about killing monsters and getting to the next level. You choose how to lay out the different lands in the game, what order to do everything in. You can catch monster eggs and raise them as pets, grow food to feed those pets, play music for spirits, build your own weapons, armor, and musical instruments from scratch, and you can even build robots to fight alongside you. That's why I call this LP Let's Everything, because you can do damn near anything in this game. Anyway, let's get on with it. Building robots, or golems as they're called in this game, takes lots and lots of equipment, which is either going to take lots and lots of money, or lots and lots of enemy grinding. It may seem like a lot of work, but you're going to see that the results are well worth it. To start, go to the golem shop, duh, and talk to one of the life balls that Professor Bomb gave you. Then, you have to choose a weapon, followed by one, two, or three pieces of armor to build your golem from. Now, the stats that your golem gets are taken directly from the equipment you use to build it. So the attack power of the weapon you choose is going to be the golem's attack power, and the combined defensive stats of the armor you choose will be your golem's defensive stats. As for stats like power, HP, charm, and luck, assuming the items you use to build them have all zeros for them, Every golem starts with a base of 20 for all these stats. Of course, if the equipment has stat bonuses or special defenses, those will be carried over. As for how mystic powers affect your golem, or what determines its HP, or why essence levels and negative stats don't seem to carry over, I'm not too sure about that. Now, even though golems fill the same slot on your team as pets, they're very different. And the biggest difference is that golems do not gain experience or level up. Whatever your golem stats are when you build it, that's what they're going to stay at forever. The only way to make it stronger is to deconstruct it and rebuild it from stronger equipment. Thankfully, if you do choose to deconstruct your golem, you get back the equipment you built it from. Yay! You also need to remember that the equipment you use to construct your golem determines more than just its attack and defensive stats. The weapon you use determines its attack type, and although there are 11 different weapons in the game, there are only 6 different golem attack types. Building a golem from a sword or axe will make it a guillotine type, a two-handed sword or two-handed axe will make it a chainsaw type, a knife, spear, or staff make it a spear type, Hammer or flail make it a hammer type, gloves make it a knuckle type, and a bow will make it a shotgun type. Your golem's attack type determines which type of green logic blocks you can equip to its logic grid, but I'll get into that later. The armor you choose to build your golem from also determines the size of its logic grid and its malfunction rate. Building a golem from only one piece of armor will give you a 4x4 size grid, Two pieces of armor gives you a 5x5 five five grid, and three pieces gives you a 6x6 six six grid. Now, the more armor you use to build your golem, the higher its malfunction rate will be, which means your golem will be more likely to get a little confusion cloud over its head and do nothing when it should have attacked. But simply building a golem isn't enough, and if you take it into the field right away, you're going to find that it doesn't do anything. Because not only do you have to build your golem, you also have to program it. And that's where logic blocks come in. Logic blocks are these little Tetris pieces that you place in your golem's logic grid, which determine its actions on, under various circumstances. The blocks you place along the left side determine what your golem will do when he's up close to an enemy, while the ones you place to the right determine what it does when the enemy is further away. As for the vertical axis, this involves the golem's attack gauge. Unlike your own gauge, a golem's does not fill as it attacks enemies. It fills automatically and goes empty every time it performs an action. The blocks you place near the top tell the golem what to do when the gauge is near empty, and the blocks near the bottom tell it what to do when the gauge is full. A golem with an empty logic grid will have no actions to perform in battle, and is utterly useless. So before taking your golem anywhere, you need to fill its logic grid. But before you can do that, you need to build logic blocks from weapons, armor, and musical instruments first. All logic blocks are built by combining two pieces of equipment, and there are three basic types of logic blocks. Green, which are specific to one of the six attack types and can only be equipped to a golem of the same attack type as the block. So you won't be able to equip shotgun blocks to a chainsaw golem or anything like that. 
This also means whatever weapon you use to build your golem, you're going to need more weapons from that same attack type to build green blocks for it. Red blocks are attacks which are not specific to any attack type, so they can be equipped to your golem no matter what weapon you use to build it. Blue blocks are defensive or evasive actions which are also not specific to any attack type. The actions that a logic block will allow your golem to perform are determined by what equipment they are built from. Thankfully, not all equipment types are compatible when building blocks, otherwise the list of block types you can create would go on forever. Also, the stats of the equipment you select also determines the power level of the logic block. So the stronger the equipment you use to build your blocks, the more potent your golem's attacks will be. As for the shape of your logic blocks, I'm not really sure what determines that. Unfortunately, it can get to be a real pain when your grid is getting full and the pieces you can make don't come in the right shape or size to fill in the gaps. So depending on how many golems you build and how big you make their logic grids, you could be spending a lot of time making, buying, or grinding for equipment to make your blocks. Also remember that your inventory has a combined equipment limit of 100, so when you're out gathering equipment to build your blocks, make sure you keep an eye on how much room you've got left. Because once you hit the limit, any equipment drops you pick up in battle won't actually go into your inventory. Because this game doesn't give you the option to swap out stuff you already have for stuff that you find. It'll probably take some experimentation before you can figure out what attack type you prefer and what actions you want your golem to perform. Also remember when building logic blocks that once you create one, the equipment you use to make it is gone forever. Unlike golems, blocks can't be deconstructed to get your equipment back, so you might want to create an extra save file to do your experimenting, until you've worked out the final list of equipment you need to build your golems and your blocks as you want them. And don't forget that you can access your golems logic grid from the main menu, so you don't need to come all the way back to the workshops unless you want to build more blocks. The last and certainly least important step in building your golem is the paint job. By selecting from the produce that you've grown in the orchards, you can give each of your golems their own distinctive appearance. Or make them all look exactly the same. Whatever you want. Almost every fruit and vegetable in the game gives your golem a unique paint job, though there are some pairs of produce that give the same paint as another, and some paint jobs also look fairly similar. Still, I can't imagine too many people wanting to paint their golem shack brown. Not just because the color is dull and ugly, but because you'd have to be willing to give up a toadstool shed to get it. Assuming you ever manage to grow the damn things. So, that about covers the basics of golem construction. If you're really interested in learning all the intimate details, there are plenty of guides on the subject that you can easily look up. And I know it may sound stupid to tell people to look up a guide in a video that's supposed to be teaching people about the very same subject, but, as I've said before, this is a completely optional aspect of the game. One which I have not felt the need to devote years of research toward mastering. I just wanted to cover the basics and show off what these guys can do. So, I hope you found this informative and entertaining, and just maybe those of you who decide to play this game will give a bit more attention to the golem building aspect of the game. Have fun, and I'll see you all next time. Why the hell do I keep saying that? I never get to see any of you.